Hey folks, Bill here, Whirly Bird Video Productions. Back at you with a video. I know I've been gone for a while. Uh, lots of folks have been asking, hey, where's some videos from Whirly Bird? Where's Bill at? Well, I got a new job, because this isn't my real job. This is my hobby, of course. Uh, so I got a new job now. I don't have near as much time as I did to do the videos before, but I'm trying to make way to do a few videos. So uh, I got a lot of stuff to do and a lot of new toys to show you. Uh, first of which, uh, we're really not talking about this beautiful P47 here today, but at any rate, this is the top flight giant scale P47 in the Tar Hill house scheme. What I wanted to show you today is a neat thing I just got. It's uh, the RC stand. It's actually the stand that's holding this airplane up. And I'm not talking about the little plywood or the pine piece that I have here uh, that's uh, holding the airplane. This actually, uh, this is what I haul the airplane with, so it bolts directly to where the wing goes so that I can haul the fuselage without getting torn. But it's what it's sitting on, the actual plywood stand here. And we'll, we'll get some better video here in a second. I'll move the camera around where you can see it. Uh, but anyway, it's from RC uh, uh, Airplane Stands uh, It's pretty neat. It's not cheap. It's uh, it's around 200 bucks shipping with the, the deluxe model, which I got the deluxe model. And it's basically got holes with some casters that comes with. It's different from the standard model. Uh, and I'm not using the casters right now, but I wanted that option in case I do have it in the shop. I can put the casters on it and roll it around. So I do have the casters. But for most of the time, I'm not going to be in a place where the casters are work. It's going to be out at the field and the grass or the gravel uh, and or, you know, working on it in the uh, trailer. And the casters really wouldn't work that good in there. They are locking casters, but again, uh, most of the places I'm at, I'm not going to be able to roll it around. But this really helps to uh, get the aircraft in a situation where I'm getting it out to put together, put the wing on it. And uh, I'll turn this thing around and show you here and show you how I convert it. So I'm going to have to flip the airplane up because if I'm at the field, I'm going to put the wing on to fly. So I'll pull it out of the trailer just like this, flip it up. Then I'll take the bottom hauling stand that I use off. And then I can put the uh, bottom wing on really easy by myself without having to have some friends. Generally, I'll have friends anyway. But it makes it easier because this thing picks it up off the ground. You're not laying down on the ground trying to get your wing on or holding the fuselage up at some weird angle or sort of thing. So um, let's uh, go ahead and I'll just pick this up and turn this around. I'll move the camera a little closer so you can see. You're probably going to lose me in the frame, but you'll have my hands in the frame. And more importantly, you'll be able to see uh, a little bit more of the uh, stand and how you set it up to hold uh, multiple size airplanes. This particular stand goes, you know, from a 40 size or a 25 size even airplane all the way up to a 40% size aircraft. Now, I would like to see this thing hold a 40% aircraft. I'd just like to see that. Now, I will show you pretty soon uh, around, a, well, I think it's a 37, 35% aircraft I got. I've got a Hangar 9 Beast biplane. I, I can try putting it on here and see how it holds it up. But it does seem to hold this up without any problem. It's got nice little adjustment knobs that makes you tighten and where you can articulate it in however type of configuration you need it for the length of the fuselage, width of the fuselage, and everything. So let me move the camera around and get a little bit better view and we'll check it out. So yeah, I kind of cut my head off there when I got the camera around, but uh, you can see more of the stand this way. So I'm just going to pick the airplane up, show you a couple things on the stand, and then we'll put it back down. So the stand's got uh, several different parts um, from your main part of your frame, which is pretty cool. These little twist knobs he has on there allows you to configure this and put the air airplane stand up pretty easily something similar to that and of course the other side folds up so it makes it a nice little package to put back in the trailer when you're done for the day and again you just lo loosen these little twist knot the twist knock knob I'll say it a second. twist lock knobs and allows you to slide that up and down, which is pretty neat. It articulates really well. Um, see if I can get her in the right direction. This takes a little bit. I just just got the stand, so I'm still getting used to it a little bit. Trying to figure out for each airplane really where it needs to be at. This knob also allows you to uh, make the uh, arm here 
higher or lower depending on how high you want it. It also came with a little wood ratchet to help you tighten those up. But uh, generally looks uh, like I can do it by hand pretty easy without going for that ratchet. I'd imagine when I'm trying the beast that uh, I may need the ratchet. So I always like to set this thing up pretty wide at first. So I set it up just kind of horizontal until I get my airplane on there. And then I can adjust it from there where I want it. The big deal is figuring out where your supports are on your frame when you go to set it back down. Tighten that a little too tight here. And then it's kind of locked down. Looks like I got this end up maybe just a little tall. So I could adjust that down by setting the uh, this knob on the bottom. And get it how I want it and in this particular uh, wing stand I'll, I'll go ahead and remove it let me grab my tool so I made this uh, stand really just again just for hauling it because it seems like 90% of the time maybe more than that you get your aircraft all beat up is generally hangering it you know and hauling it I heard the term hanger rash so I like to try to make it any way I can. And most of my airplanes I like to get were actually set on the landing gear. So a lot of the Warbirds I've had in the past have a center section wing that stays bolted to the airplane and the outer wings come off. But you know, I just made this uh, and I'm not finished with it actually yet. I gotta put a couple more little braces on it and then paint it. But I made it so that it would come off just like the uh, wing. So it, uh, Got the dowels up front just like your wing goes on. Screws on using the same bolts that your wing is bolted on. And then it allows this to, to set on the floor in my trailer. And I can uh, bolt this down to the uh, shelf in my trailer and keep it from turning over. Make it really easy to uh, haul. So you can see that this holds it up really well so that you can get over here put your wing on make all your connections and go ahead and, and bolt your wing on uh, so it's uh, pretty good it, it does seem a little wobbly when it's up uh, up high like this if you let it down a little and actually articulate it down to the ground just a little bit it's not quite as top heavy but now this is a heavy airplane this is a 50 cc size aircraft and uh, it's, it's heavy I mean you've got a big motor up front and uh, lots of batteries and servos in here so it is, is heavy uh, I really like the stand. The way that uh, the design is is really good. It works really well. Uh, my really only problem with it um, is it's made out of plywood. <laughs> and it's, that's hard to tell by looking at it because it is finished. And if you look on the website, uh, when I seen it, I really didn't pay that much attention to it. I just really assumed, and you know assume means what that means. Uh, by for the price and and the way that it was finished that it was going to be a hardwood like a maple and that would be my pick or, or cherry or oak and I know those are more expensive but you know a maple wouldn't have been uh, that much expensive to sell this for 200 bucks and make money uh, now is my time worth that yeah I mean yeah it, I wouldn't build you one if you said hey Bill would you make me one of these out of maple for 200 bucks I'd probably say no I don't have the time so that has to definitely factor into it. Um, uh, would I buy one again? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, if I had to do it again, I would definitely buy it again because I, I like the fact that I don't have to lay down to work on my airplane. Uh, it did come in broken. Uh, it was broken shipping. One of the 
arms here uh, that, uh, and I'll show you a picture right here, if I can find the picture. If there's a picture right here, I found the picture. Um, that it was broken, uh, and it was broken loose. The laminate had actually, the plywood had delaminated. So it really wasn't the glue joint. Uh, and it looks like this is put together as glued, stapled, and screwed, the whole construction is. So uh, it looks like he put some effort in it, but the plywood, you know, it's, it's laminated wood, and therefore the plywood. And the first uh, layer is generally always really thin, and that's what this was. It's a veneered type plywood. and. Uh, that first layer actually delaminated and broke loose. Now it was probably hit pretty hard, that's why it broke, but it did break that loose. So it wasn't the glue joint. A friend of mine said, oh, he just didn't glue it right, but it pulled the plywood with it. So, I mean, it, it wasn't the glue joint. Um, but I contacted uh, the manufacturer just to see their reaction, and they were um, apologetic and immediately sent me out another part. Now, I didn't really need the other part. I just wanted to see the reaction of them. You know, I, I pulled it loose, put a little wood glue on it, shoved it back together, pulled their staple out, and put the screws back in it. And what I think probably what happened to him is he put that together and uh, stapled it. And I think his staples pushed the wood pieces apart just a little on one end. And then when he screwed it together, the screws tightened up, but they didn't pull the wood in tight to the joint. So the top part of it actually pulled the wood, the bottom part didn't. Now if he'd have had that whole glue joint in there, it probably wouldn't have broke apart, but then again, I don't know how hard it was hit in shipping. I mean, it was really done in shipping. You could tell that the Chinese soccer team had kicked it, even though this is made in the United States, so it just came from up the road, actually. Uh, but uh, the UPS soccer team, I guess, uh, kicked it around. Uh, but at any rate, uh, I think it's a, it's a great stand. It is expensive, so you know it's not going to be really really cheap. Uh, could you could you get two or three of your buddies and buy them and then take it apart and trace it and build them? Yes, you could most definitely, but that's an awful lot of effort. So uh, again, it's it's a great stand if you're looking for a stand that's going to keep basically any size airplane that you have off the ground where you don't have to lay down work on it you know put the wings on what have you even if it's a, a mid-wing aircraft you know you could still set the fuselage up here and put the wings on with no problem so again it's um i like everything about the stand there's nothing i don't really dislike about it you know it is wobbly again but i think if you made it where it wasn't so wobbly it'd be so darn heavy you wouldn't want to use it um but if, if, again, if you don't want to, you know, get down on the ground and mess with your airplane, you know, say you get out to the field, it's early in the morning, the, the grass is wet, and you're having to kneel down and work on it, your, your, your pant legs get wet or your, your knees get wet, what have you. And um, this kind of keeps it up off the ground, allows you to work on it, especially if you've got a lot of connections. Uh, I particularly don't have that many connections because of this aircraft I use some... Uh, wonderful little connectors that you can get that all of my servos connect into two little connectors so really I only connect two connectors and it connects the wing to the bottom part of the aircraft and that uh, you know my wing has retracts and everything in it and I've got electric retracts so I don't have air but if I had air you know you got all those connections in the in the wing to make and it really helps if you've got this up here and you're holding the wing say you got a friend holding your wing it makes it much easier if you've got air you can make your connections here instead of kneeling on the ground or what have you make your connection set your wing on and, and you're done uh, it uh, it displays airplanes really well if you're out say at a mall show we do a lot of mall shows where we try to kind of uh, raise money for the club sometimes and we also try to recruit new uh, folks to come and fly with us and it's, it does good we have a show we put on at different places we call them mall shows because there used to be a lot of malls around we'd go and set up and and uh, we'd set the projector up and let them play the flight simulator and sort of things and uh, this would, would have come in really handy on putting some very pretty aircraft like the p-47 you know i could put the wings on this thing flip the retracts up turn it over and set it on so that it would be setting with the retracts up and display the aircraft uh, to look at. So I think it, uh, it comes in handy that way also. So if you're looking for a stand for a small or big size airplane and the price doesn't scare you, uh, check them out at rcairplanestands.com. I'll try to put a link down in the description. 
uh, and I'll try to get some more videos out to you guys. It just takes a lot of time to not only shoot the video, but sit down and edit the video and upload it. Uh, and the new job is pretty much, uh, it's pretty much totally different. I'm going in at, uh, much earlier now, uh, actually being uh, usually at work at my desk at 7 a.m. So time I get home, I don't want to go out and shoot videos or do anything. Uh, and then on the weekends, I'm ending up doing something else at one of my other little businesses I have on the side. And then the hobby stuff has been cut back this year. So uh, hopefully uh, I'll get more time soon to get some more videos to you. Uh, short videos perhaps maybe so I can do them quickly and uh, small reviews. But I've got a lot of new stuff. I've got a DJI uh, Phantom 3 Pro and that's the Phantom 3 Professional. I love that thing, it's awesome. I'll try to get a review to you on that. It's really, really cool. Uh, I had a Typhoon and I did. I shot the video for that thing back in May and I've yet to edit it and put it up. So I'll try to get some of the video I have shot this year and I've probably got three or four videos that I've shot that I haven't had time to sit down and edit. Uh, but I, when I moved to jobs, I actually lost access to some uh, equipment to, to edit software or edit video I'm sorry and uh, so now I'm, I'm back using I got my own machine again and I got my own software again and and it's different software so I'm trying to learn that so be patient with me more videos are coming soon more reviews uh, more um, events uh, hopefully next year I'll get to do a lot more events this year I pretty much got the Joe Nall event, and that was about it. Because of my new job, not a lot of vacation time built up. My previous job had around six weeks a year. Now I've got two weeks a year, so my events have been cut down a lot. Uh, now I did work it out. I'll be getting more vacation next year and from now on, so soon I'll be able to go to a lot more events like I was doing. Uh, but at any rate, uh, thanks for watching. Please give me a big thumbs up and rate. If you're looking for a stand, check this one out. If you guys have other stands and other options, be sure to post those down there because I'd like to see them. Uh, a cheaper alternative uh, with this kind of quality I would like to see. I've seen a lot out there that were pretty much just pipes bolted together that swung out. I really didn't like those. A friend of mine has one and it doesn't really hold the airplane well. We actually tried this in his kind of moves around and we're constantly holding it. This thing is, is totally hands off. Had it a fly in this weekend, the wind's blowing and, and it's it's going everywhere and it was fine. Uh, so at any rate, uh, let me know. Uh, again, uh, thumbs up, rate, and subscribe. We'll see you next time on Worry Bird Video.